Tamaki Makoto Auckland has a multicultural food scene like nowhere else in New Zealand. Over the next few weeks, we're taking you on a round the world food tour via Auckland's best restaurants, sharing the diverse range of cuisines our city has to offer. In this video, we're hunting down some of the best spots for northern Chinese food. We take you into the kitchen of a local's favourite, where you'll find some of the best seafood dumplings in the city. We eat traditional northern street food of cold skin noodles and the world's oldest burger, and share a feast of spring pancakes. These are Auckland's tastiest northern Chinese eats. Hit subscribe and get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. We normally travel the world for this YouTube channel finding the best food the world has to offer but because of COVID we're back in our home of New Zealand Aotearoa and we're now here finding the best food but we're very lucky in New Zealand it is COVID free we can travel freely we can eat in restaurants we can go to sports games so we can still experience the best food in the world down here in New Zealand and it is like the buffet of the world down here because we have such a huge range of cuisine to choose from. There is over 200 different ethnicities in Tamaki Makoto, Auckland where we're filming this video which means there is a ton of food that we get to experience now that we're back here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. for this video. It's going to be all about northern Chinese food. Now the north of China's staple crop is wheat so this video is going to be packed full of dumplings, buns, noodles, pancakes, the works. Now we're starting with the dumplings, one of my favorite food groups ever. And we're heading to Tianzi Dumpling House. This place does epic dumplings and we can't wait to share them with you. So let's head in and get a feed. We ate at Tianzi Dumpling House a few months ago and we were blown away by their dumplings. We had a whole range of uh, mainly pork dumplings and when we left, Levi who is the chef and owner of this joint said to us, you've got to come back and try our seafood dumplings because I'm from Dalian, a port city in northern China and we're famous for our seafood. So get back here and eat our seafood dumplings. So we are, that's what we're going to do today, eat a bunch of uh, fish dumplings and we've been invited back into the kitchen, so we're going to check out what's going on in there. Yeah, lots of different, different shapes. We're very lucky to have access to the kitchen to see all the process of the dumplings being made. So they make everything from scratch. So we've seen dough being made for noodle dishes that they do, but we're ordering dumplings today and now we're watching the dumplings getting made. So Levi's showing us, he's rolled them out by hand. He's got an amazing technique doing two at once on this beautiful slab of marble. And now he's loading them up. And this dumpling that he's making is the pork, chive and prawn dumpling. And I love that he's got a pile of prawns separate, big juicy prawns beautiful meat, relatively lean, but every dumpling is guaranteed to have a big juicy piece of prawn in there as well because he keeps them separate, it's not just one big mixture, so he always adds a bit of prawn into each dumpling. It's fascinating watching the whole process here in the kitchen. activity in this kitchen so these guys make the dumpling wrappers as well fresh and this is Levi's son so Levi is the chef owner of Tianzi Dumpling House and he has been showing us how our dumplings are getting cooked so we've got one lot of steamed and one lot of pan fried fish and chive dumplings have come off the steamer and now we're just waiting for these pan fried dumplings to um, release their moisture so Levi popped a corn flour slurry in with the dumplings and now the moisture is going to evaporate and form this crispy skin on the bottom so prawn, pork and chive dumplings. Oh I'm so excited! Oh my goodness! Oh, oh. 
we've got a massive stack of dumplings in front of us. So fish dumplings, which isn't very common to find here in Auckland. So I'm excited to get into these. So we've got uh, pan fried ones, which are made from ling fish and chives. And then we've got steamed ones, which contain prawn, pork and chives. Now we've got a little array of condiments or stuff for dipping. So I'm just gonna make up um, a vinegar. So black vinegar, uh, chili and soy mixture for dipping my dumplings into. We have ordered seafood dumplings because Dalian, which is the city Levi is from, is famous for its seafood, so seafood is king. Now, I think I mixed them up before. These are the corn, pork and chive dumplings and the steamed ones are the fish dumplings. So, oh, look at that. I got, I've got a juicy, juicy dumpling skin. You can see that it's still really moist and then a crispy bottom. Stick that in the sauce. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Holy moly, that is great. That is a sensational dumpling. Super silky skin on the top, and then a crispy bottom, and it is packed full of flavor. So the filling is quite chunky. You can taste the pork, you can taste the prawn, and a real bite of prawn, and then the chives add this. Um, really light fragrance. It is so well seasoned. It's perfectly seasoned and then dipped into that spicy sauce. So chili, soy and vinegar. It is sensational. Now I'm just going to go for one of these steamed fish dumplings. So ling fish and chives. All right. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. I bit into it and it burst in my mouth. There was a, a huge rush of moisture from the dumpling filling, really flavoursome and a strong uh, fish flavour, beautiful fish flavour and you can taste the, the fish and the chives, it's very distinctive. Man that's good! We are absolutely blessed here in Tamaki Makoto, Auckland with the diversity of the city and with diversity comes incredible food. So in the last census here, 28% of the people identified as Asian and 11% of the entire population identified as Chinese. So with that we have a huge breadth of different Chinese food and it's food from all over the different regions in China and that's why we chose for this video to concentrate on northern Chinese food because there is some fantastic food options in Auckland for Northern Chinese. Next up we're heading for a traditional Northern meal of Tunbing or spring pancakes. Now where we're filming is called Dominion Road and it's actually a very dense strip of Asian restaurants, loads of Chinese restaurants. They're all very in your face, right on the street. But the place that we're filming at is very hidden. It's easy to miss, it's not on Google Maps. And all we've got to go by is this sandwich board, mostly in Chinese and all it says is restaurant spring pancakes. So we know they're open, let's head in. <laughs> Is this Jinjiang Rose? Oh, cool. Can I get one of those, please? Tunbing or spring pancakes are traditionally eaten on a day called Li Tun, which marks the first day of spring. So you eat this meal to promote a good harvest. But in reality, in the north, this uh, meal is eaten at all at all times. It's a really popular meal to eat. And what it is is essentially uh, pancakes, which are made out of wheat flour, served with a bunch of different dishes. So you take your pancake and you you chuck all sorts of stir-fried dishes and roll it up and eat it. And this place serves not just plain wheat flour pancakes, but they do spinach ones, kumara or sweet potato ones and pumpkin ones. So let me show you these bad boys. So we've got, this here is a kumara or sweet potato pancake, so wheat flour pancake. It's quite big and we've got three stir-fried dishes. We've got scrambled eggs with Chinese chives. Over here we've got sweet and sour shredded potato with a bit of 
dried chili and then this here is Jinjiang Rose so it is pork uh, cooked in a sweet bean sauce and this is a dish which is famous uh, in Beijing which is the capital of China and it's covered with some uh, shredded spring onions. You load up your pancake with whatever combinations you want. My first pancake, I've gone with the three-way combination. So I've got every dish on the pancake. Um, something you eat that's quite similar to this is Peking duck. So you eat that with pancakes wrapped up. And in the north of China, wheat products like this, so wheat noodles and pancakes are quite common. So China's very regionalized in its food. Some areas eat a lot more rice because the rice grows well there. In the north, it's all about wheat. So it's very common to have wheat products like this. Just wrap this pancake up. Oh, the pancake is so thin, it's soft. A little bit sticky to the touch. I'm just going to go in with my hands. Ooh. Mm. Mm -hmm. The pancake itself has a fantastic texture. So light, but a little bit sticky. It's sort of almost like it's a glutinous sort of feel to it. And then the fillings are actually quite sort of chilled out like this potato one so sweet and sour potato with some chilies on there but there's no spice coming through from that you get a nice little sour twang from it which is really good the texture of that's quite neat actually it's it's neither crunchy nor soft it's this perfect in between so it's quite a nice balance in the dish and that pork very good burst of flavor from that great seasoning and the egg just balances it all out nicely. You've got the creamy egg, you've got the, the greens in there. But nothing's overly punchy. It's all quite casual and easy going. And I love this method of eating in the pancake. It's super neat. Our next restaurant is just a hop, skip and a jump away from the pancake spot. We're heading for some traditional northern street food. So we're going to be eating liang pi, cold skin, as well as the world's oldest hamburger. We grabbed some tea and we have got our food and it looks delicious. So this is a cold noodle-like dish. It's called liang pi and because it's summer in New Zealand at the moment this is the perfect thing to be eating. So we've got our noodle-like dish of liang pi. So you can see these um, noodles here. We've got pieces of gluten and then some shredded cucumber on the top. It's wallowing in what looks like a spicy sauce. And then we've got ro jia mo, which is what they say is the world's oldest hamburger. It dates back to 221 BC. And essentially it is braised pork, pork that's been cooked for ages and ages with a ton of different spices, and then it's stuffed into a flatbread. I'm gonna mix this liang pi up into this sauce, have a taste, and then tell you a bit more about the dish. So this is a cold noodle dish, and liang pi translates to cold skin. So it's wallowing in the sauce, which has got chili flakes. I can see some bean sprouts in there. Mm. Mm. That's delicious. It's got a really strong sesame flavor. A ton of sesame seeds in there, but I think there's sort of sesame oil in the sauce. It's got a real kick from that chili oil. And the fact that it's cold is really refreshing and it's great with that shredded cucumber it's fresh cucumber try this gluten mmm so bouncy in texture it's soaked up all of the sauce too so when you bite into it it just explodes in your mouth this is such an interesting dish how they make the the noodle is quite um, fascinating what they do is they take this ball of wheat flour dough and then they, they wash it in water and squeeze all the starch out of the dough. And the water that's left over is what they make this noodle with. So this is this, the starch noodle. And then 
The, the leftover, the stuff that's been squeezed out, is the gluten. So this is often used in uh, vegetarian Chinese dishes. And these two dishes are often eaten together or ordered together as street foods to create a, a meal. I'm going to dive into the Ru Jiam Mo. I don't speak Mandarin, Sheena doesn't speak Mandarin. I can't really get my tongue around Mandarin, so sorry if I butchered the name, but said to be the world's oldest hamburger. So this is another great example, like I spoke of at the last place, about the use of wheat in the north of China. So wheat in the noodles, wheat hamburger with this braised pork inside, heavily spiced. Let's just get amongst it. Mmm. Mmm. That pork is full of flavor, so braised in a lot of spices, not, not hot chili though, so things like I sort of taste uh, star anise, things like that, so very fragrant on the tongue. Uh, the, the flatbread is a little bit dry, but still very tasty, nice and crispy on the outside, fluffy in the middle. This is exactly what it says on the box. It's a piece of flatbread with some braised pork in it. It's simple, it's delicious, great little snack. It's not too big. That is good. I love Northern Chinese food because it's very different to some of the other regions. Like that's what's great about China. It's so diverse, so big that you get so much different food. And it's been great today exploring all these Northern Chinese places and showing you some of the best you'll find here in Tamaki Makoto, Auckland. If you've enjoyed the video, hit subscribe, drop a comment down below, smash that like button, and thank you for watching.